The following program may contain coarse language, violence, nudity, mature subject matter, or scenes which may not be suitable for all viewers. Viewer discretion is advised. All hit radio. Welcome to the X Zone, a place where fact is fiction and fiction is reality. Now, here's your host, Rob McConnell. And good evening, one and all, and welcome to the X Zone. I am Rob McConnell, and for the next four hours, I'm your host and your guide as together we cross this time space continuum to a place that I call the X Zone. It's a place where people dare to believe and dare to be heard. It's a place where fact is fiction and fiction is reality. And we come to you Monday through Friday from 10 p.m. Eastern until 2 a.m. Eastern right here on the Exxon Broadcast Network, Talkstar Radio Network, Mutual Broadcast Network, and on Channel 54, the Exxon TV channel on Simul TV. Um, I'm kind of chuckling because something really nice happened today and I, I like to share nice things with you the members of the exo nation i was in one of the uh, the pen center which is a very big shopping center down here in niagara and uh, i was walking along and i saw this little boy pointing at me and he and he said something to his mom and his mom looked at me and motioned me to come over to them so i did and she said excuse me sir would you mind if my son asked you a question I figured the guy was a little guy, no more than four or five years old. What, what what kind of question can he ask me, right? So I said, sure. And mom said, okay, go ahead. Ask, ask the question. So the little guy kind of looked down and he, you know, little kids move their foot when they got something to say, but they really don't want to say it. He said, Santa, how come you're limping? I said, well, son, the other day I was in the reindeer stall and Rudolph accidentally stepped on my foot. And he said, oh, are, are you going to be okay for Christmas Eve, Santa? And I said, said sure, you know, I'm, I, I wouldn't miss it for the world. So you just be a good boy for your mommy and daddy and Santa will do his best to make sure you get everything you asked for. And, I, and the lady kind of put a smile on her face and she mouthed, thank you. I walked away and I said to myself, wow, am I ever blessed? I wonder what other people would have said if that little guy had asked them the same question. That's what it is when you're six foot five and you have white hair and a beard, I guess. Anyway, I just thought I had to share that with you because it was something nice. It was something good. And it was something that really instilled the Christmas spirit in me. Exo Nation, uh, my guest this hour is a lady I've had the pleasure of having on the show many times before. Her name is Dr. Rita Louise. And uh, Dr. Rita Louise, welcome back to the Exxon. Always great talking to you. And how are you? I'm doing great, Rob. And it is always wonderful spending time with you. We always have such great conversations. We do. We do. And that's what life, in my opinion, is about. Communicating, sharing information, getting the information out there. And, and I know that you work very hard in helping people around the world through the work that you do. And uh, it, it's not very often that I have the opportunity of, of thanking a guest on behalf of listeners. And we had a number of listeners write us to uh, say hello to you and to really? thank you for the work that you do when they knew you were coming on the show tonight. So thank you very wow, much for all our listeners. That? Yeah. Well, that is like a Christmas gift to me. <laughs> well, Merry Christmas to you and yours, by the way. Thank you. You too. Um, for the listeners and viewers who haven't had the opportunity, Doctor, of, of seeing you or hearing you before here on the show, can you tell them a little bit about yourself? Sure. So by day, I am a naturopathic physician and a medical intuitive. And so a medical intuitive is someone that uses their intuition to help assess health concerns. Mm -hmm. I do a lot of intuitive counseling, a lot of anxiety, helping people with things like anxiety um, and trauma to help them become more whole, to kind of get rid of what is keeping them from being present in the moment. 
You know, I work with people all around the world uh, by Skype or by phone. Mm -hmm. And so you don't have to live near me in order to access my services. And of course, all your services are listed as well as your contact information on your website, which is soulhealer.com. Correct. We are living in difficult times, Dr. Rita. I, I, I have never met so many people who are totally stressed out. We've got the stress of just getting over the COVID pandemic. We have the stress of the of the financial world. We have the stress of the homelessness. We have the stress of the war in Ukraine. We have the stress of the of the political arena around the world. How do you know? I, how has this affected the way that people contact you for the services that you do provide? Well, you know, they don't call me because about the war in Ukraine or about things like that, you know, but I have just noticed that people have, I'm going to say more generalized anxiety. And, you know, as a society, as a culture, we're not really taught how to deal with them or deal with it. You know, if you think about Eastern cultures, you know, there is a very strong t tradition of meditation or doing rituals, you know, and having acts that, help you relax, help mm -hmm. you unwind, help you move through the stress of your day or the stress of your life and cope with it better. But in the West, we don't, we don't teach that. It's not part of our culture anymore in our tradition. I think at one point in time, religion tried to fill that role, but even today, I, it's not really working. So how do we cope with this? How, how should people cope who do not have the ability to cope? Uh, because it seems that the stress just keeps on piling on top, piling on top, piling on top. And, and for those of us who celebrate Christmas, who are less than fortunate, who have families who are expecting Santa Claus to bring a lot under the Christmas tree, mm -hmm. uh, you know, how, you know, I don't know how pa some parents do it. I really don't. Any suggestions well, for them? To, 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 I have to, suggestions, yeah. but I'm going to kind of throw me in here for a second. Sure. You know, I used to be a very anxiety-driven person. You? So with Between COVID happening mm -hmm. and then everything else, I have got to the point where it's like, oh, here, just, you know, throw another rock in that pile. I mean, you know, you can't, you get to a place where you just start laughing at yeah. it, you know, and it's like, okay. You know, I had a situation happen where my very expensive TV went on the fritz, of course, the week after the warranty expired. Of course. Then my toilet overflowed and the plumber oh. couldn't figure out what was going on. And so by the time my microwave went on the fritz, <laughs> which was a couple of days later, I just started laughing. And Holy it's like, crow. okay, you know, this is just how it's going to be right now. Yeah. And so I think part of it is people just accepting, you know, what's going on and finding amusement. You know, before we came on air, I mentioned about the uh, volcano that yes. went off in Hawaii last week. And I was like, oh. A volcano went off in Hawaii. It's like, well, here, let's just throw that on the pile of, you know, <laughs> can it get any worse? I mean, after a while, uh, I think you just have to kind of find the humor in it. Humor is the best medicine, isn't it? It is. Yeah. You know, but if you can't find the humor in it, you know, doing things like like breathing, deep breathing, you know, getting away from your computer, turning your phone off, uh, <laughs> spending oh, wow, time yeah. with... Well, you know, we're so engrossed in being in front of our computer, being in front of our TV set, that we never have the opportunity to reset, you know, and kind of get back into our old space, our own space, where a, a tradition like meditation or doing yoga promotes, you know, it promotes you finding you and all of that other stuff just melting away. You know, you mentioned uh, the iPhones, and I am a strong proponent of when you come into our home to visit us, we have a basket in the entrance. That is where you put your cell phone. 
If you're coming to our home to visit us, we, you know, you don't need to be on your cell phone. You don't need to play games. You don't have to do this, that, that. Talk, communicate. You know, I remember when I was a kid, this goes to show you how good my memory is because I can remember <laughs> way back then. Uh, we used to talk at the supper table. You know, mom and dad, they both worked. My brother and I, you know, would do what we could around the house. And when mom and dad got home, we all made supper. And then we would talk about something called school. And, you know, whether we did our chores, this, that, and the other thing, we communicated. But now you go into any restaurant, and I'm sure you've seen this wherever, you know, you live down in uh, Texas, I believe. Are you all right, doctor? Oh, my goodness. Oops. All righty. What we're going to do is we're going to take a commercial break now because the uh, good doctor is... Yeah, we get a, oh, we're going to take a break, doctor, so please stand by. Uh, Dr. Rita Louise is our special guest, and her website is soulhealer.com. I'm Rob McConnell. This is the Exxon. The Good Doctor and I will return on the other side of this break. So whatever you don't go away. And we're back. How are you doing there, doctor? Much better. Much All right. Better. Glad to glad to see we haven't lost a guest on air yet, and I didn't okay. want you to be the first. <laughs> Dr. Rita Louise is our special guest, www.soulhealer.com. Um, how do our thoughts and emotions affect our health, doctor? <clears throat> Well, you know, our little introduction was a great kind of segue in. You know, so there's a process that happens inside of us. We Something happens and we have a thought about it. Mm -hmm. That thought creates an emotional response inside of us, <clears throat> which can activate our stress response system, which will then activate bodily processes or cause us to have an action, whether we say something, whether we smack somebody up the side of the head, or whether we mm -hmm. post something mean on their Facebook page, you know, whatever, whatever that action is. But our thoughts can become limited by our life experiences. You know, we can create um, core beliefs that say, I'm not good enough, or I'm not smart enough, or I'm invisible, or nobody likes me, or I'm not worthy, that interfere 
inside of us. So something will happen and it might be mundane, you know, not anything important, but it can bounce off of one of these negative programs inside of us, creating an overwhelming emotional response, which will create an, a bigger trigger. <clears throat> So that's one of the things that can happen, you know, and when we have these things happen, it leaves us in stress. Um, you know, so even the whole COVID thing, mm -hmm. I mean, think about the people that, you know, there was a period of time. Okay. I will admit I was, I'm not very compliant with medical things. So wearing a mask is not my favorite thing to have to do. And even though I would wear one, you know, if I went into a store or whatever, you know, into a communal area, you know, there would be people that would come in and they wouldn't have a mask. And these other people that were masked would have meltdowns. I mean, just complete and utter meltdowns because it bounced off their fear response. Right. You know, and so the people that are having the, re the reaction, the, the overwhelming reaction, it's like they're holding on to all of this energy. <clears throat> And depending on what it is, it will sit in the organs and glands of our tissues and in time create disease. So like in Chinese medicine, for example, mm -hmm. each of the major organs carries a different emotional vibration. So for example, the gallbladder is all about our ability to plan and execute actions. So there are some people that can't plan their way out of a paper bag. And it, what's interesting is that when you meet those, you find two different things. Either they can't do it, they never learned how to do it, or they always are trying to plan, but then their plans get interfered with. They have children, they have a mm -hmm. sick spouse, whatever. And those are the people that manifest gallbladder disease. And it's extremely consistent. And I had a client who I made the comment, it's like, well, you never learned how to plan, you know? So it's not that it's broken. It's just that you don't know how to. And so then I found out that a brother, the father, the uncle, all of them had their gallbladders renewed, removed. And her comment was, yeah, they can't plan either. You know, wow. so people talk about diseases being hereditary, mm -hmm. but is it the thoughts that we carry around and these limiting beliefs that are actually creating the disease inside of us? Well, how can someone find out what thoughts and emotions might be affecting their health? That's why they come to me, Rob. <laughs> uh I mean, it can be a little bit challenging to yeah. self-diagnose something like that. Mm -hmm. um, but if you really work on your awareness, then you can just kind of self-diagnose. Um, you know, so if something happens and you have an over-the-top reaction to it, that might be a good time to probe yourself and do some inner questioning about, well, why did that happen? You know, what was right. going on inside of me? Hmm. Um, you know, one of my limiting beliefs was I don't matter. And so if something happened and I would talk to someone about what had happened, you know, friend or whatever, mm -hmm. you know, it would always end up with the statement, well, it doesn't matter. You know, and so, duh. You know, it's like, oh, that's the limiting belief. And so we often will communicate that to other people as we're kind of digging through our own stuff, you know? And so, but once you know what those core beliefs are, then you can create a plan to work through them, change them, modify them, eliminate them, prove them wrong. I would imagine that a number of these uh, core issues come from their parents who are, you know, sometimes a parent will say, you know, you're, you're not very smart. You're not very attentive. You don't listen. Well, you're never going to amount to anything. Mm -hmm. And that stays with a child. 
And are you able to help these kind of these these, these people who have these um, issues that were developed by poor parenting? Oh, very much so. And what I have found is that once someone knows what the core belief is, mm -hmm. I mean, because again, it really takes a lot of uh, self-awareness for you to figure out what your own thing is. Um, mm -hmm. But many times my clients, once I help them identify, you know, what the core is, what the center of that onion is, they can go, oh, well, I don't want to do that anymore. And it becomes really easy to shift it and modify it. I mean, you know, it sometimes takes behavioral changes. Sometimes, you know, you have to kind of work through it, mm -hmm. but it's much easier once you understand what it is. But for so many people, those beliefs come in so early in our lives. So when we're so young that we just assume this is who we are, this is how the world works. And we just accept that it's okay. So take what's going on right now. It's like young children that are growing up right now are going to accept mask wearing as that's just what you do. Yeah. And actually I was having, I, I don't, I don't know where you're airing, but I'll try to keep it as light as possible. I was having a conversation about uh, drugs, uh, illicit drugs with a friend of mine. Mm -hmm. And he made some comment that, you know, he had smoking weed. And I was like, well, I was, I grew up, you know, before the war on drugs and it was just very different, you know? <laughs> was you there know? a war on drugs? Hmm. Yeah, Nancy Reagan, she was all about it. Oh, George Bush as well then. Yeah. Yeah. Um, That's no show. but children that were born or were young during 9/11, yeah. uh, you know, if you think about, you know, duck and cover, I yeah. mean that was a little before my time. Um, you know, you grow up with that as part of you, and it's not just parenting. You know, society oh. plays a big role in it. Sort of schooling, edu the educational schooling. field, yeah. You, you know, because when we look at, I, I look at a child as when they're born, they are a, a blank, a blank slate, or as I like to use the, the analogy uh, of a blank computer hard drive. We in society, as well as the educational field, program that child. You know, as they grow up, we talk to them about a cow that jumps over a moon, a dish that runs away with a spoon, a lady that lives in a boot with all these kids. Another <laughs> lady lives in the pumpkin. There's the Easter bunny. There's the there's Santa Claus. And the list goes on. And as we bring them into the school, there are cats that talk, dogs that talk, and we fill them up with this world of fantasy. And then what happens at about grade three? We say, ah, we lied to you. <laughs> you know, I've never like thought about it from that yeah. perspective, but that's very true. Yeah. So, you know, but you can even take it to a deeper level. Mm -hmm. So there is something that is identified as feral children. And there have only been a handful that have been documented throughout history um, because it just doesn't happen anymore. So a feral ch child is a child that is left somewhere to grow up by itself you know so you can just imagine like tarzan king of the age right yeah. you know he was a small boy when his parents died he was left in the woods and so there was one case in the late 1800s where they found this they think 10 year old 12 year old boy who was living with the animals and they brought him into society and they really couldn't teach him how to speak. Wow. And it was pretty much everything that they could do to teach him to use a knife and a fork sort of to eat. And so it's not just the emotional programming that right. we receive as an infant. It's how do we fit into society in general? You know, one of the things I talk about is humans act human you know so we might be american and they might be chinese but there still is this level of congruency about who we are and how we act stand by doctor we've got to take our break always great talking to you and explanation our guest this hour is dr rita louise and if you'd like to find out more about the doctor if you'd like to contact her 
to help you with some issues amongst the other great work that she does, visit her online at soulhealer.com. I'm Rob McConnell. This is The Exxon. Don't go away. So I was watching the X-Zone TV channel last night when I was abducted by aliens and they kept repeating to me over and over again, Simultv.com, Simultv.com. What's Simultv.com? That's what I asked them. They had it written on the side of their UFO. How do you spell that? UFO. No, I mean Simultv.com. S-I-M-U-L-T-V.com. S-I-M-U-L-T-V.com. Right. S-I-M-U-L-T-V.com. Interesting that you were abducted by aliens in a Simultv.com UFO last night. Oh, yeah? Yeah. Now that you mention it, I remember now last night I was awakened from a deep sleep. My great-grandmother was standing there. She said she'd come from the hereafter to tell me about Simultv.com. She even spelled it out for me. S-I-M-U-L-T-V.com, sonny boy. S-I-M-U-L-T-V.com. S-I-M-U-L-T-V.com, sonny boy. Wow. Yeah. Guys, you'll never guess what my psychic guru just told me. S-I-M-U-L-T-V.com. Exactly. Are you guys psychic too? Of course. We all know about Simultv.com. S-I-M-U-L-T-V.com. Dr. Rita Louise is my guest this hour. Soulhealer.com is her website. You are a medical intuitive, am I correct? Correct. How did you, or when did you realize that you had the ability to become a medical intuitive? So I went to the Berkeley Psychic Institute and when I was about 30 and after not being there that long, I learned that I had been very psychic my whole life. Right. And, um, and so I had a couple of experiences there that I really didn't even know that was medical intuitive, hmm. but I was working at a, I was at a whole life expo and I was sharing a booth with a girlfriend of mine and we were doing readings and she was in chiropractic school. And I had a client who had like this giant inflammation going on in her back and all this hip stuff going on. So I called my girlfriend over to like address this stuff going on in her back because this is before I got my naturopath degree, before I got my PhD. I mean, this is before, before, before. And she couldn't relate to anything that I was talking about. So I came to the understanding that my ability to have like x-ray vision and look into people's body and see issues mm -hmm. um was a gift you know like i don't like to deal with dead people you know everybody has their their thing that they tune into and it was just very easy for me it was it's just obvious and apparent and so that you know you know i so brought my date myself it was before medical intuition was even a word. You know, I used to call it psychic healing. Right. You know, and so then, and, you know, how do you promote that? You know, so, but then I decided to go back to school to get my naturopath degree. And that's when Carolyn Mace came out with her anatomy of spirit and coined the term medical intuition. It was like, oh, I got something I can call it that's not offensive to people. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Have you found throughout the years that being a medical intuitive as well as a, a naturopath, have you seen that Western medicine is starting to be more acceptive of your gifts and the talents that you and others have? Maybe on the down low they are. Um, they're finally getting to where they recognize stress 
mm-hmm. is a contributor to health issues. Um, but they kind of leave it, you know, people go, oh, well, I have stress. It's like, yeah, but you can't fix it until you really understand what you're stressful about, which is, you know, part of that whole core belief and getting to the bottom of what's creating the problem in the first place. Right. Um, you know, so they have been more open to natural therapies. They've been much more open to sending you to the chiropractor or sending you to physical therapy before just, you know, wanting to schedule you for surgery, which is a blessing. You know, the intuitive part, that hasn't been as much my experience, but, you know, the more natural path and natural healing part, they've started to embrace. And I think it's because more and more people would rather go that route than take a prescription medication. I imagine so, yeah. Maybe we can clarify for our listeners what the difference between a medical intuitive is and a person with other psychic abilities. Okay. So, all right, so I'm a little bit biased here. Mm -hmm. Um, You know, so to me, a medical intuitive is someone who can look inside your body and find inflammation and dysfunction in the organs, glands, and tissues. Now, there are, you know, bless your soul, um, a lot of people that identify themselves as medical intuitives, and they look at the aura and the chakra and the energy field, which, I mean, I offer a medical intuition training, and that right. is like really early in the training of looking at the energetic system, which I do as part of it. Sure. Um you know, but then there are people that are mediums, you know, they talk to dead people. There are people that channel, which I try not to do. Uh, you know, there are people that more specialize in past life stuff. Mm-hmm. Um, pretty much, I mean, anything. Um, yeah, I got nothing. <laughs> um, what have been some of the most memorable cases as a medical intuitive that you've that you've worked on and helped with okay well this was kind of i was um doing an interview for channel four news i think it was channel four news you know and so they filmed me doing a session with someone and you know blah blah whatever um And then I was talking to the host, the anchor person who was there, Mm -hmm. and we were just sitting in some chairs, and I thought we were just (laughs) chit-chatting. And so he goes, well, can you see anything about me? And I said, well, you know, there's this spot on your leg, you know, like right above your knee, and there's this tension, you know, and I don't know, I make this all these comments about this spot above his knee. Well, then the piece comes out on the news. Well, apparently, so he does the interview and the voiceover and the whole thing. And we're sitting there talking and I start mentioning about the thing with his leg. And it segues into filming that they had done where he had gotten his knee operated on and they were filming in the operating room. Hmm. I know it was like, okay. Man, if that isn't um, proving that beyond a shadow of a doubt that you have these abilities, I don't know what it does. I mean, besides knowing you for all these years. Mm-hmm. Um, um, how does, yeah, all right, that, that's a member of the media, but how do common people take it when you when they come to you because they something just doesn't jive with them, with the medical community? And they come and they've heard about you and they seek out your advice and and your your ability to see. Mm-hmm. How do they feel when you give them a diagnosis? So as a naturopath, and I'm going to mm-hmm. use that header, you're not allowed to diagnose because only medical doctors can diagnose it's against the law or else you would be practicing medicine without a license. So I can evaluate them and I can give them my two cents, uh, but I cannot quote unquote 
diagnose them. So, so it's just the wording where it isn't uh, where you and I are talking, and I'm sure right. everybody is saying, "Well, an evaluation is a diagnosis." Right. Yeah. yeah. It, it's the wording, but it's very technical wording. Yeah. Um, and so, most of them. Okay. So I'm not a medical doctor, you know, and I have not gone to medical school, so I don't necessarily know doctory words to put with things. Now, there are things that I've worked with, you know, well, your liver looks big and it looks fat. So, oh, it must be enlarged, you know, and, you know, after a while, you kind of pick up on the lingo and pick up on the vocabulary, you know, but sometimes you see stuff and you are like, I don't really understand it. This is what I'm seeing. Mm -hmm. And then I get my new thing is I keep my computer right there. And I look it up. I had this one woman and she gave me this list of complaints and I'm looking at her head, you know, and when you do this work, it's kind of like there's a library. So you see some weird thing or detect some weird thing mm -hmm. and then you have to go, well, this is what it is. And I would look, was looking at her head and it was like, it was like sloshing around. And I'm like, well, it just seems like there's water on your brain. I go, that's just really weird. I don't, I don't, in my mind, I couldn't figure out how that could possibly ever happen because I'm not a medical doctor, but that's what I was seeing. Right. And so, of course, she was dismissing me, you know, and was like, okay, well, whatever. This is before I started keeping the computer close by. So when I hung up the phone, I got on the computer, looked up water on the brain, and all of her symptoms were on the list and she said her mom had the same thing and it was something that could be generational son of a gun so what did she do with the evaluation that you gave her dismiss me i'm sure <laughs> really yeah how frustrating i mean there are some people that you know i have two different kinds of clients there are the ones that understand energy, you know, and one of my gating questions is, you know, if I say aura or chakra or energy, do you know what I'm talking about? Because people that have that base understanding of the subtle word world, mm -hmm. even if they don't specifically know what those terms are, but there's a general acceptance to it, those sessions always go great. When I have the people that just want me to give them, you know, recommend supplements to them or give, give them a diagnosis or whatever. Those are always the worst sessions, you know, because they come with expectations of what they're going to get. And I'm not a medical doctor. I can't give you a prescription, you know? And so I'm working with herbs and working with supplements and working with natural therapies is very different than going and getting a prescription that's going to alleviate the symptom. You and I have to take our final break, so please stand by. Exonation, our guest this hour is Dr. Rita Louise. Her website is soulhealer.com. And we'll be back on the other side of the short break as we wrap up this hour here in the Exxon with yours truly, Rob McConnell, from our broadcast center and studios in St. Catharines, Ontario, Canada. Don't go away. Beautiful Mind Coffee is delicious coffee your brain will love. Made with ethically sourced 100% Arabica coffee grown in the volcanic soil of the Tolima, Colombia region, Beautiful Mind Coffee is roasted and ground in small batches to ensure each bag contains a wonderful full-bodied artisan coffee. Beautiful Mind Coffee contains herbal ingredients to aid in boosting your daily mental clarity and focus. Maca root powder, Green tea extract and American ginseng have all been selected for their ability to support good brain health. Taking care of your brain's health now can help delay or prevent the onset of cognitive dysfunction, including dementia, Alzheimer's, 
and more general memory loss as you get older just by enjoying the delicious flavor of our roasted coffee and herbal ingredients found exclusively in Beautiful Mind Coffee. For more information on Beautiful Mind Coffee, visit us online at www.beautifulmindcoffee.ca. Beautiful Mind Coffee is now available at Amazon.ca. And we're back on the Exxon Radio TV show is brought to you by our good friends at Beautiful Mind Coffee. Visit them online at www.beautifulmindcoffee.ca. Dr. Rita Louise is our guest, soulhealer.com. First of all, Dr. Rita, thank you so much for joining us. Always a great pleasure talking to you. And um, the last time you were on, I think we were talking about you being the founder of the Institute of Applied Energetics. Yes, sir. Tell us, tell our listening audience about that. Sure. So the Institute of Applied Energetics is a training. Well, it's a school that I've created that offers distance learning training for someone that is wanting to become a certified medical intuitive, a certified intuitive counselor, or a certified energy medicine practitioner. The um, And it's all distance learning, so you can do it all from the comfort of your own home, which is really wonderful. And in these trying times, so there is the kind of foundation program that starts the whole thing off, and it's called um, Spiritual Healing for Self-Growth. You know, and if people are really being challenged with dealing with their energy, with grounding, with learning how to relax the body and release all of that tension we're holding on to. It's a great training to give you the tools to work with so that you can work with your energy body, learn how to ground it and run energy, learn how to manipulate your auric field and learn some basic healing techniques that you can use to disinfect yourself and come back more into the present moment and be that happy, peaceful person that you know you can be. Do students have to have the ability or can anyone take this course and and gain the knowledge to become a medical intuitive? Um, So I'm going to be extremely honest here, extremely Anybody, let me start over. Okay. I believe that everyone has the ability to tap into their intuition. Um, And it's a gift that is just part of us by nature. And so what the training does is help facilitate situations so that you can learn to access it on a regular basis. Where I find the shortcoming is there are some some people that are not visual. So this training really works on developing your clairvoyance, your ability to see energy, to see pictures Mm -hmm. in your mind's eye. And there are some people that they're feelers, you know? So if you say, well, can you see your car in your mind? They just can't do it. You know, they just can't. It's just not part of their makeup. You know, the vast majority of people are visual. Yeah. Like there are some that are feelers or kinesthetic in nature. And even though they could do the energy medicine training up until that level, because that really works more on the feeling part, when you advance into the higher areas, it really becomes a very clairvoyant, a very, well, look at this. Well, look at this. Well, Mm -hmm. what do you see? What do you, what are you getting when you look at this? So that's my one disclaimer, but short of that, anybody can do it. Not only are you a busy medical intuitive, but you've also written a number of books. How many books have you written all told? So six books total, but I'm working on a new one, Rob. So I will reach out when I get that one done. Well, and and of I will course, tell you what it's about, but I don't really know right now. <laughs> well, of course, you know, as soon as you reach out to us, we'll get you back on. Mm-hmm. Uh, we, we're, we're running out of time very fast. And, and here's a question I like to ask uh, our, our guests at this time. What is your message? What message would you like to share with the 
with the audience of the XO Nation who are now peeled to their radios and their TVs because they want to hear words of wisdom from Dr. Rita Louise. You know, I think right at this point in time that it it's just really important for people to find themselves to regain being in the present moment so that they can enjoy themselves and enjoy life and find humor in the crazy that's going on around us. You know, and if all they do is just breathe, you know, close your eyes and breathe in through the nose and out through the mouth and do that four or five, eight times, a couple of times a day, they will gain so much benefit just from those little moments of breaking away from everything that's going on in their life. I, I firmly believe that the old saying, take time to smell the roses, is one way of telling people you've got to breathe, slow down, breathe, exactly. enjoy the moment. Uh, Dr. Rita Louise, it's always a great pleasure talking to you. I want to thank you so much for taking time out of your busy schedule to be with us. I wish you continued success. And from our home to yours, the very best of the season to you and yours. You too, Rob. Take Merry care, Christmas. Doctor. Merry Christmas, Doctor. Exonation, I guess this hour has been Dr. Rita Louise. And if you'd like to find out more about Dr. Rita Louise, visit her online at www.soulhealer.com. I'll be back on the other side of the short break that is coming up as we continue here in the Exon with yours truly, Rob McConnell from our broadcast center and studios in St. Catharines, Ontario, Canada. Mm -hmm. 